The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OA Now here. I'm Sammy Termina, blogger around the OA, the host of Last Three Brain Cells, and the host of Between Terminas on Orient Naval Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice and also hearing those on SoundCloud as well. This week, we got a guest here, um, Adams Girls basketball coach Joel Malberg, sporting the D and, of course, sporting the um, the Hills shirt <laughs> featuring Rochester Adams. Coach, welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. Really happy to be here with you guys. Of course, you are the um, third ever girls basketball coach on the, to join us on the podcast. We, uh, we've had Kellen James here, Stony Creek coach, and also Bob Bridges, Lake Orion girls basketball coach here. Boss have been here. So I'm in good company. You are in great company. There we go. Um, obviously, when you look at, you know, obviously, how's the summer league been going? Of course, girls basketball has still been continuing in the summer leagues. We're going to talk the districts. We're also going to talk your team. Obviously, the division you're in, of course, the blue. Um, also, we're going to... Get your thoughts on the other districts and also your yeah. thoughts on the boys' basketball program at Adams and also the football program at Adams. So okay. a lot to talk about with you, you know, when you talk about Rochester Adams. Absolutely. Um, let's look at our big – um, let's look at our first um, – you know, when you look at um, – how's your summer team – how's your summer league been going? Of course, last – of course, this is your third year at Adams, right. um, taking over the Highlanders. Um, I mean, like, I mean, first year, you know what I mean? It was, it was, it was a good, it was an all right year, you know what I mean? And second year, kind of, you were very young last year, so you know. And this year, you know, a lot of um, you know, being the Lord, being the blue this year, you know. So talk about the state of the Highlanders in your eyes. Yeah. So the summer is uh, the the biggest thing we have to do is is build a full program. Um, we can't just wait for the talent to be there. We have to develop it and develop that chemistry between the talent, and that's where the summer program comes in. And now, this, like you said, this is our third year. Uh, we got a little bit of a late start getting hired in July or getting, you know, approved in July of 2021. So we were a little late on that summer, but we were still able, still able to get a foundation kind of late. And now a lot of the girls are playing for the third year in a row in the summer program. They're really starting to understand, you know, what what we want as a, out of them as a program, what their expectations are, what you know, where we're going to hold them accountable. So it's definitely been our best summer, uh, not just in terms of, you know, winning and losing summer is more about development. But we're also we're seeing some of some of the, the rewards of having those players with a little bit more experience and uh, very much uh, enthused, uh, not just with the move, moving into a new division, but just having, you know, our top two scorers were freshmen last year and having them back. And, you know, it's amazing how much you jump uh, athletically and maturity wise between that freshman and, and sophomore year. But I'm already seeing that with our young players. I'm um, talking about obviously, of course, you know, building a program, you know what I mean? It starts in the middle school levels, obviously with Adams, you look at Van Heusen, you look at West, um, um, talk about how important the middle school program has been to building your program. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, it's not just the, the, the basketball they play at middle school uh, alone, which is, you know, we have uh, really good coaches at Van Hoosen, uh, really good coaches at West, but it's also, it's getting them interested in the game at that point. If your players start playing seriously at the height, you know, when they get to high school, when they get to ninth grade, you're, you're always going to be playing catch up to the better programs, especially in a league as good as the OAA. So uh, really finding those players even before they get to middle school and then encouraging them and giving them opportunities to play together. Um, and we're really lucky, like, like you said, you know, Van Hoosen, all the kids feed to us, and then we get about 30% of the kids from West. Um, and other, I mentioned we had two freshmen lead us in scoring, one from West and, and one from Van Hoosen last year. So. Obviously, when you look at your team, obviously you mentioned the two freshmen. Um, talk about your two freshmen, obviously, like more in detail. I mean, like I know a lot of – People around the league don't know much about them. You know what I mean? Right, but us, I yeah. think because like, but also like, um, but, you know, talk about your team in general. Obviously, okay. when you look at your team, obviously very young last year, right. um, you know, kind of taking your lumps, you know what I mean? But you had some good wins last year. Knocked off Lapeer, which was a very good win for you. Um, talk about your team, um, how, how it's going to look like, especially heading into this season. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, we have seven of our top nine scorers returning uh, potentially from last year, Uh, six of our top seven rebounders, basically 80%, at least 80% of our points, rebounds and assists are all coming back. So there's reason to be optimistic. We have that foundation and you know, we were young last year. We'll still be young. I might have up to six or seven seniors, depending on, you know, who comes out and who makes the team. But uh, the core, the majority of our players that played last year were freshmen or sophomores. Um, whether it was on the varsity or the JV, and that's that's going to make up a lot of the playing rotation this year. So 
We're going to continue to be athletic. We'll have a little bit more size. We'll actually not have to start somebody five foot six at center and lie and say she's five nine on the roster. Yeah. Um, but uh, there's there's still a lot of progress. I'm really I'm I'm excited to see how they handle first how they handle success because I do think we'll have a little bit more, and then how do they handle uh, adversity? You know, the first time we lose a game, we, we you know we're going to start to expect to win instead of hoping to win. And the first time we lose a game, we're expecting to win. How do they bounce back? And do they keep working as hard as they have to come this far? And when you look at, of course, you know, that concept, you know, especially with the young team, you know, you know, they're going to take, make mistakes, obviously, you know, they're going to take their lumps, you know what I mean? And, but when you look at the word hope to win and expect to win, right. um, obviously, you know, at a place like Adams, you know, you've seen the successes of the other programs, you know, I mean, like you look at players like you, you have some proven players in there. You have Samantha Blaine there. You have Morgan McPherson there. Um, talk about how they've been doing this off season, both Samantha and Morgan. Uh, well, we have uh, Morgan's not going to be with us. Uh, she's she's moved out of the district. She's going to be at uh, Avondale. And okay. Tremendous player. Looking forward to seeing her continue to be successful there. But uh, yeah, Sam will be back with us. She'll be a four year varsity player. She's uh, kind of the leader of our. She's always kind of been a leader of our team, even when she wasn't a senior. But now having the most experience and, and the most reps, uh, she's an all league honorable mention the last two years. Um, I expect her to be another, you know, an all league player again, maybe even an all county player this year. I hope. Um, and you know, with as with most of our players, because we were we've been so small over the, she's really learned. She can really play any position at this point. She's played some center for us, even though she's only about five six. And uh, over the summer last year, uh, with our point guard out with an injury, she re- she ended up running the point for us. So she's really versatile and a great softball player, too, three-sport athlete, also does sideline cheer, and there's just, just a great kid. And, and, you know, people like her are what we want to build our program around, so we're, we're real proud of Sam. Um, what about Faith? Obviously, you know, you look at last year, you had, um, I think she was all league last year, Faith. Yes. Um, talk about how Faith's development's been this year for you guys. But uh, if, you've, if you've seen Faith play, you know that uh, – She's almost like if you were going to build a robot to play basketball, you'd, you'd want somebody like her. She's extremely fast. She's extremely – she's about five foot eight with a six foot five wingspan, so those really long arms come in real handy. Um, even as a freshman last year, she put up over 35 blocks, uh, which, you know, rarely That's do you insane. have. Yeah, as a freshman. That's um, nuts. And a couple of highlight blocks uh, that she, because she does have that closing ability with being a real quick sprinter and also having that tremendous length. So with her, it's been about skill development. She has the tools. She's very young. She's still not even 15 years old, heading into, uh, you know, her sophomore year in a few months. Um, and, you know, develop her shot goes in sometimes, but uh, there's still a lot of work to do on the form. And then the biggest thing with talented players is teaching the difference between the shots you can get and how to get good shots. Because with her, you know, until she got to the varsity level, she was always superior to her peers. And so she could pretty much create a shot whenever she wanted and get a rebound if she missed. Now she has to be a little bit more discerning and decide, like, is this the time? And also learning to trust her teammates, learning that she doesn't have to do it all or put all the pressure on herself. So, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm reluctant to set any hard goals for Faith, but I really, you know, I would be lying if I told you I didn't think the sky was the limit for that kid. Well, you know, when you look at a course, you know, when you look at expectations, you know, I mean, like, look at me for when I when I played Special Olympics basketball a couple of years ago. I mean, like, um, my first three years playing, um, I didn't, I didn't have to be the guy, you know what I mean? And, and I know that mindset, you know, that faith has, mm-hmm. um, you know, like, you know, just like you have the whole world on your shoulders, you know what I mean? And then like, you know, and then like, you know, but then realizing, okay, we got some pieces here, you know, so I know the right. mindset. Yeah, And you play, you end up playing when you trust your mm-hmm. teammates, you end up playing better when you try to do it all yourself, you know, you, you actually kind of talk yourself or play yourself into mistakes. And so she's learning that progress and, you know, becoming more of a uh, solid and consistent defender, understanding that defense is just as important, and knowing that now when she cheats and she goes for a steal or a block, she's leaving a really talented player open who's going to make her pay by scoring versus, you know, at the middle school level, a lot of times she could get away with that. Well, it's a difference level between playing varsity basketball and then going to middle school basketball. I mean, like, you know how yep. you know how that is. It's like going like a complete – you're going from like a middle school level where it can slow the game down, and then when you're going to the varsity level – Oh man, it's going to oh, be yeah. interesting. Yeah, you the, know what I mean? The pace is the biggest thing, and that's that was the the progress. Her and, and Layla, our other freshman from last year, uh, who was on varsity, that was they were uh, they very much surprised me. I didn't start the year with either of them in the starting lineup. My hope was to kind of bring them along slowly because it can be overwhelming for mm-hmm. freshmen, like you said. That yeah. jump is huge, uh, but I was really impressed with how quickly they adjusted to the pace of play. They like playing fast. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're good at something, you like to do it fast. You like to challenge yourself. Talk about Layla. I mean, obviously, you know what I mean. Like what she's done. 
You know what I mean? Like last year, you know, talk about her game. I was talking know? to one of Layla's classmates, another girl that's uh, going to be on our team next year, and she said, Layla's good at everything, Coach. And she says, yeah, whatever she picks up, you know, whether it's playing pool or, or playing ping pong, whatever she does, she just is good at it instantly. Um, she's extremely competitive and extremely athletic. That's what that's I like about her. She's oh, extremely yeah. competitive. Yeah, she definitely, yep, she is. She's uh, as great of a basketball player as I, I haven't seen her very much, but she's at least as good, if not an even better soccer player. Um, and she could probably add a third sport if she wasn't so darn busy. But, um, you know, playing, not only playing big minutes as a freshman, as she ended up doing the second half of the year, um, but playing a lot of point guard as a freshman, which you rarely see anybody who's able to do that. And while we didn't put a lot on her to run the offense as much last year, she was our, our best press breaker. Um, she's very difficult to trap because of how quick and how low to the ground she is and how quick she's able to change directions. And she really doesn't have, there's no difference between her right and left hand when she's dribbling. Uh, so, you know, having a player like that, we talked about with Faith about trusting your teammates. Well, Layla is somebody who inspires trust in her teammates because they know that if they just do what they're supposed to do, even if, you know, somebody's not really confident with the ball, they can get it to her and she, and she can kind of bail them out. Um, so, they, you know, nobody has to do more than what they're capable of because she takes on what is usually the toughest burden for everybody, you know, initiating the offense and breaking the press. I'm trying to paint the picture here with you guys this year. Your backcourt is going to be as young but extremely talented, it looks like, you that, know, when you look at – That's the guys. hope. And, you know, our, we're going to add uh, not only to them, but we have, uh, you know, Helen Flores was a junior for us last year who was hurt to start the year, but she was one of the – probably the best players, uh, probably maybe even our best player on JV two years ago. Uh, we were expecting more of her last year, but injuries kind of held her back. She's another great athlete. Uh, and Bella Guthrie was our most improved player. She ended up starting 10 games for us after only starting, like, one or two games on JV the year before just a – Hard worker, so the, their their pieces are coming together, and then we add a, uh, you know, a nice core from a JV that went eighteen and three, um, you know, and was competitive in every single game. Even the three games they lost were were winnable in the fourth quarter. So, uh, we're we're very like I said, it starts here. We're very optimistic about the future. I'm really proud of what we we've started to build here. What these kids have really built with their hard work and, and their energy. I'm very optimistic about your team. Very optimistic. You know what I mean? Obviously, when you look at the opportunity, you know what I mean, like. Now we talk about the division. Obviously, you look at, of course, um, this JV team went 18-3 and three against a very good division last year in the right. white. You know, you're going against teams like Oxford. You're going against teams like Harper Woods. You're going against Seaholm. I mean, th that's not easy. And we crossed over with three teams from the red right. as well. So they, they played a, they, you're right. They played a good schedule. Yeah, and that was got very, them ready. it was a very good schedule. Um, yeah. Now let's talk about the division. I mean, obviously, um, you know, you're in the, you're in the blue now, going to be with Southfield, Berkeley. Troy, Troy, Athens, and Farmington. Um, I want to get your thoughts on each of the teams. I mean, like, obviously, what your, what, your, what your initial thoughts are about the team, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I mean, like, so I'm going to give you, like, a team, and then, like, I'm going to give you, like, what is your initial thought of that team? Sure. Um, I'm going to go Farmington first, you know? Yeah. We, uh, we played Farmington late in the season last year. It was, it was a pretty good game, a pretty competitive game. We, are in, we ended up uh, being fortunate enough to get a victory. But in watching and, and preparing for that game, uh, they were in the blue last year, so it was a crossover. So we didn't see them in, you know, much until we were getting ready for them. Uh, I was impressed with the athleticism. I was impressed with how they're kind of relentless. Um, you know, a couple games that they played where they got behind and, and made comebacks, um, and they don't really play any different whether they're ahead or behind. Uh, I don't know too much about what they have coming back um, from the J as far as coming up from the JV, but as far as their returning varsity players, I believe they're kind of in a similar situation to us where they were fairly young last year. Um, uh, and you know, I'm I'm curious, like with any you know, anytime you see a team move up a league, you know the competition's going to get better, but they've also earned that by having success. So I'll be very intrigued to see how they do next season in the, the league up. Farmington, can we curious to see how they do this year, especially when you look at. What Coach Laura Guzman has, obviously, you know, they do, they should be solid, you know, but we'll see. We'll mm -hmm. see. Um, Troy Athens, obviously, we know the rivalry between um, you guys and um, you guys and the Red Hawks, no strangers to one another. Yeah. You know, talk about the Red Hawks, obviously. You know, Coach Stacey Klump, what she has yes. with her program and everything like that. Really, really a big fan of Stacey and what she does there. Um, we've played them. They've been, they were in our league the last, this will be the third year in a row we've been in the same league. So we've gotten to know them and we just played, we just scrimmaged them in the summer. Um, and she's got one of her best players coming back. She lost uh, Alex Link, who would have been a Alex soft, Link, yep. freshman. I know her Starter very well. as a freshman would have been. I know her very well. Yes, and she we, she played a little bit against us, and she's she's much improved, and, and she's going to be a big help in kind of letting all the rest of their pieces fall into place. 
Um, and you know, we I, we we uh, only played them once last year. So the last game got got uh, canceled due to weather. But uh, the three games we've played with them have all been very competitive. Um, you know, they they beat us last year, but it was kind of like it was a turning point. To as, as much as it's funny to sound like uh, you're happy about a loss, you're never happy when you lose. But no. we played really well against them. Um, for the first time in about two weeks when we played, the, or in about a month when we played them last year. And I think we ended up winning four of our next seven games after we played them. So uh, I think they're going to be, comp- I think, you know, again, I, I, th- I think our league's wide open, but I'd be very surprised if they're healthy, if they're not near the top of our league. Last year with Athens, we talked about the injuries. I mean, injuries mm, was the thing that really doomed them in last year. That really was the difference was, oh yeah, you know, it kind of it kind of really saw in their district last year with, um, you know, you really look at it. You know, they they had. A, I thought they had a winnable district. Yeah, you took a four within that district. Right. But I felt like they could. It could have had a chance to beat them. You know, they were healthy. Yeah, they and they just never really. Mm-hmm. Other than maybe you know, without they had Alex miss the whole season. But other mm-hmm. than maybe the first couple weeks of the season or first couple weeks of games, they really did never had their full complement. So that's tough. Mm-hmm. Here's one for you, Berkeley. You know, when you look at the Bears, new yeah. coaching staff, new coaching staff. Um, Plenty, plenty of talent back. They they do graduate a pretty good senior class, uh, but you know Maeve will be back. Maeve Nolan, who's yep. a heck of a player. She's she loves playing. I think she's scored at least fifteen every time we've played them over the last two years. She just loves playing against us. Um, and also, uh, you know, whoever takes over the program, like I said, there, there's not a uh, there's not an absence of talent there. Even though they're graduating those seniors, they had another sophomore, I think, that was starting for them last year. Yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. Kirkwood maybe was her name. Yeah, Haley Kirkwood. Yep, Yep. that's She's getting – she's got a lot better from the first game when we scouted them to the second game when we scouted them. So I think she'll be a real force next year. Um, And, you know, like I said, anytime you're you're coming in as a new coach, the biggest thing will be how are they going to play? Are they going to have the same style as they've had in the past or are they going to take on a a new identity? Well, here's the learning from – and I think a perfect analogy is, you know what I mean, and – I watched the Detroit Pistons. Remember the 2003-2004 NBA championship team? Oh, yeah. Um, you know, there has to be a transition period. You know, when you have a new coach, there has to be a transition period. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, it has to happen during the season, you know? I mean, like, it, and I know you went through this, obviously, with, um, you know, with Adams, you know, when in your first year. You had to go through that transition period. Um, and, you know, I'm curious to see how Berkeley goes with that transition period. You yeah. know? Yep, that, that's going to be the big thing. There's a few few teams changing coaches this year, and I'll be curious to mm-hmm. see yeah, what direction they go. Speaking of a team that's going to be changing coaches, mm. um, Troy. I mean, yeah. obviously, you know, Julius Porter did step down a couple weeks ago. Right. Um, they're still looking for a new coach there. I mean, like, I've heard rumblings, you know what I mean, going around. You know, I mean, like, um, so what's your initial thoughts when you see Troy? Um, obviously, you know, they were in the red last year, yeah. but. But what's your thoughts on Troy? Well, I mean, they took they took their lumps last two, last actually the last two years in league play, but um, you see the the benefit of and we talked a tiny bit before we started here about the boys team and they're them playing in the red. Uh, one of our goals at Adams is to get up to the red because even though if you lose games, you're preparing yourself by playing such good programs, such high level programs. You're preparing yourself for for the more difficult games and and for the playoff atmosphere where. Quite frankly, rarely do you get more than one game in the playoffs that that a gimme, and you usually don't even get that. Um, you know, everybody by the time playoff time is around, everybody's peaking and trying to play their best once you get through that that first part of the district. So, uh, for me, Troy is uh, kind of a sleeping giant. You know, I think Julius had him in the quarterfinals what two years yep, ago. Yeah, right? I remember that. Even though Reagan they had a losing did. record during the season, well, they had a losing they, record, but it, also it was funny. Part with Troy was that year was. You had Kendall Zider, but I think the big right. difference was Charlotte Sobaka came in. I mean, like, they had a big-time player come back from injury, and that was yeah. huge for them. Um, hit the winning shot. I remember that against um, Warren Cousineau. Mm. I mean, like, and, um, you know, I remember that. So that was a big difference for them. You know, they were a much different team with her in the lineup, you know. Absolutely. But, but um, you know, that you have so many kids to pick from. You have mm-hmm. such a good history there. Uh, I, I don't think. If if you even consider Troy, I guess you would consider this down for Troy, even though I don't think they've been bad the last couple of years. I just think they've been having playing a really tough schedule in the red. But I don't expect them. You know, they're they're in the blue now. I'd be surprised if, if that lasts very long. Whether it's this year or sometime soon, I expect to see them contending for or winning a league. Well, when you look at Troy, obviously it starts with um Diamond Prince. You have Regan Zider there, Carly Higginbottom, um, and of course I did mention. I mean, I did mention Regan Zider. Right. Um, obviously, when you look at Troy, I mean. That foundation there, it'll be interesting to see how Troy does in that division. How you get to go against them, get playing yeah. twice. Yeah, you know, so that'll be very interesting. 
Yep, and it, like you know, with them being coming into this division where they're not, you know, they're going to be playing a whole new set of teams. I mean, they've played some of us in crossovers. Obviously, they play Athens every year, but you know, there there's not another team from their division. Well, actually, there's West Southfield, but there's Southfield. Yeah, there's four new teams that they're going to have on their schedule. So, and probably a breath of fresh air for them instead of going up against uh, some of the powerhouses, uh, you know, in Class A in Oakland County that they have. Obviously, but you know, Troy's one of the biggest enrolled schools in Oakland County. Absolutely. I mean, them and Troy Athens obviously are third. I mean, they're two of the biggest schools in in, in world schools. Um, Now we get to talk Southfield. I mean, obviously, when you look at Southfield, you kind of look at, you know what I mean, with them. I know, um, I know, um, Shakita Coltrane has done, I mean, like, you know, obviously taking over from Michelle Marshall, that's never an easy feat. And you know that. Mm -hmm. Um, But. What what is your initial thoughts on Southfield? You know, you get to play the. I mean, like seeing them, um, that atmosphere that the Warriors have. I, I know nothing about their personnel at this point. As we get closer to the season, I'll dive in a little deeper. But uh, just from watching them from afar, or catching them. I mean, we're, we haven't played them, so but I saw some of their film scouting for other teams, and I'd say two things right off the bat: it's going to be fun to play them, and it's going to be tough to play them. They are going to, you know, even uh, even if you have a lot of talent, they don't let anything. They don't give you anything easy. You know, there's a it's a what I we call these the uh, high stress games, um, where they're going to try to make every possession stressful for you. Uh, mm-hmm. When you have the ball, they're they're, they're not going to allow you to relax at all. And when they have the ball, they're not going to allow you to relax at all. They're going to push the tempo and, and try to try to put pressure on your defense. And then as soon as you know you don't have confident ball handlers, they will eat you up. Um, and like I said, I don't know their personnel very well. I don't know what they have coming back. But you know, sometimes you watch a team and it's almost like it it almost doesn't matter who's on the court, right? It's like, oh, they, they just took out their two best players, but here come in two players, who, and they're basically doing the exact same thing. Sometimes with Southfield, um, you know, again, without knowing the players specifically, it felt that way watching them. Like, they just kind of come at you in waves. So, um, no, like, you know, like we said before the start, there's no easy days in, in, in the OAA next year. And when you look at a team like Southfield, obviously, you know, when you look at projections and people look at them early on, they're going to be deemed as a favorite, obviously, because of what they got back. Obviously, mm-hmm. you look at the athleticism, There's one little flaw that I think with Southfield, and I think, you know, who knows what I'm going to say about this, but defensively, you can score on these guys. I mean, you can really score on these guys. I mean, like, obviously, when you look at A&T, offensively, you know they want to go up and down. Right. But defensively, they're going to have a bunch of points. Obviously, you know, a team they do remind me of who you played last year was Harper Woods. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, Harper Woods, a team that loves to go up and down, um, but they do give up a lot of points. Yeah, well, yeah. I, yeah, it's a it's a risk reward strategy, right? You're saying mm-hmm. we're gonna try to play for a lot of turnovers, and we're gonna take a chance that you're not gonna make us pay more often than we're gonna convert those turnovers into baskets. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, if you if you make your shots or your passes are pinpoint, and you're able to get those layups, uh, you can score you know a lot of points against a team like Southfield or a team against, like Harper Woods. But you have to because they're gonna score a lot of points. Because you know they're gonna score a lot of points, and you know defensively, you know what I mean. It's gonna be very tough. I mean, Absolutely. like. You know, every team's got a different style. I mean, like, obviously, you've been against teams that played a fast pace or a slow pace, methodical pace. Obviously, you know how that goes. Um, obviously, let's, um, before we talk districts, um, let's talk about your, um, the city rivals. Obviously, Stony Creek and Rochester. Um, obviously, you know, um, you know, of course, you know, Adams and, I mean, like, all three Rochester schools. Then you put Ludwig Northwest in there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So talk about the city of Rochester before we talk um, the town of Rochester when it comes to basketball presence, and then we'll talk, and then we'll break down your district. Okay. Uh, yet there's there's no shortage of good teams uh, in, in the city right now, and and we're we owe all of them. They they all got we lost to all three last year. Um, you know, three really good teams. Uh, I I'm not sure what Lutheran Northwest. I know they lost uh, Emily, who was a fantastic four year player yep. for them. Um, but you know. Uh, Melberg, Jimmy does such a good job with that program that I, you know, I have no doubt that, you know, they're going to reload. Uh, and they had a, they had a number of good young players already last year that they were building around. She's just such a star that it she really caught your eye. Um, and then as far as Stony and, and, and Rochester, uh, you know, Stony's been probably the best program in the city the last few years. But I think Rochester would would have a strong case, you know, that they if they didn't already take that, that they're ready to come take it now. They're uh, you know, obviously losing a, a lot, a really good senior class, the, the girls that kind of helped turn that program around and take it from the blue one year to the white the next year to the red now. Um, but you bring back 12 feet, 
a little over 12 feet of uh, Alice Mack and Kylie Robinson. Yeah, so those <laughs> that I, they'll be just fine. You know, mm-hmm. those those two, um, not just because they're tall, but because they're so talented. They just kind of make everything easier. Everybody, you know, like we talked about with our team, when you have your lead players doing the things they do well, everybody else just kind of has to focus on their strengths and not worry about doing too much. And uh, you know, I I'm really I'll be really curious to see what what Stony looks like. Obviously, with with Sarah back for her, her fourth year, she's one of one of if not the best floor generals in Oakland County. Um, but you know, they continue to. It just seems like whenever every year they graduate one or two all league players, right? And it just seems like there's somebody else ready to pick it up. And I think between uh, Izzy and, and Merrick and some of their young players last year that were kind of in limited roles, I think they're going to take on more central roles this year. And I don't think they'll miss a beat either. I, I expect both of them to, you know, they they can be competitive with any team in Oakland County if they're playing their best basketball. Yep, and I call Stony Creek basketball team fine bomb. You know what I mean? You've heard Paul fine bomb <laughs> yeah. over at him. You know he yeah, what SEC he does guy. in the SEC guy. Yeah. yeah, that's what I call Stony Creek. Um, let's talk districts. So obviously, you guys you guys get to host districts this year. I mean, like yep. obviously. Um, you know, I mean, like, I don't think it's been a long while since I've seen Adams host a basketball district in a long time. Um, talk about how important it is to host a district before we break down the teams. Yeah, it's just fun. It's a uh, it's a great a- district. Basketball is a great atmosphere. And, um, you know, you, you get the, the first game and the crowd when you're hosting. Usually you play the second game. So you get the big crowd start to fill up in the first game. And it's usually the one of the bigger crowds you've played in front of when we played last year at Rochester uh, against Stony Creek. It was one of the best atmospheres we were in. And it, you, the kids can really feed off of it. We played, you know, like I said, Stony Creek beat us last year, but we played the second time we played them, uh, you know, they were fully healthy and we were real competitive for a half. And a lot of it was just the adrenaline from the atmosphere and the girls were just really fired up. So we're hoping to get that and it, to be even better for us in our own gym, you know, mm-hmm. where, where they're comfortable, you know, we're going to have the advantage of obviously practicing on that floor. Um, you know, we, we have our locker room, we have all just the comforts of being at mm-hmm. home and, I, you know, I, I, like I said, in district basketball, anybody can beat anybody, but you always feel a little bit more com- comfortable and confident on your home court. How about the NPR? I mean, obviously, when you look at the NPR, obviously they do the seedings. Yeah. They just seed the top two teams. Do you think, and do you think, and this is, and I want your opinion on this. Yeah. Do you think the MHA should seed everybody in your district? I am certainly uh, for trying it. I don't. I don't see the downside. I don't see how random could possibly, how it could be worse than random. You know, random is basically the baseline, and I think it could only be better. At the worst, you know, you're going to have somebody misseeded. But at this point, I think it's created a lot more um, great district finals. You know, when when I was uh, when I first started coaching, um, we got eliminated. I was coaching at Romeo, and we got eliminated. It's like 2005, I want to say. We got eliminated in the first round of the playoffs, and so for. Uh, Friday night, instead of watching our district, we went out and we watched Saginaw Arthur Hill play Saginaw High School, and they were one and two Ooh, in the state. I remember that. And this was a district semifinal game. You know, the boys' you know? games can be really interesting. You know, and when, oh, the, yeah, this was two, this sag- was a boys' oh, this game. Was yeah. boys game. This was when they had you know when Draymond was at. Uh, oh yeah. I so remember. I think Arthur Hill won it in 05 and mm-hmm. or oh six. Yeah, I'm Saginaw a class of won it the next I'm a class of six guy. Yeah. So I know. So I know what you. So you remember I that? Yeah, I remember so that. This was the first. This was either. I think it was the. It was the second. It was the first. Mm-hmm. Either the first round game, but it was on a Wednesday game. Mm-hmm. That should always be a, a district final, if not something better. So mm-hmm. I really like how the ratings have put the the best two teams. Uh, on the opposite sides. Now there are years, and you know, and uh, take North Farmington uh, and Marion, and, or uh, not Marion. Who was it? Uh, North Farmington, West and, Bluefield. Uh, West Bluefield. The, yeah, well, their their district this year yeah. was completely loaded, and yeah. North Farmington was undefeated, and they play like oh a, yeah, Mercy was in Mercy, the and they Mercy. play yeah like a seventeen win team in the first. Um, you know, you want to avoid that as much as possible. So I love the idea of expanding seating to districts, and maybe even you know expanding and, and sort of seeding an entire region. And you say, we're going to take, you know, eight eight regions of the state and we're going to rank teams one through however many. I guess it would probably be about mm-hmm. 60 per yeah. 60 to 65 per, uh, you know, class. And I, I I think it can only, especially with the, uh, the you know, the situation we're in now where it's so much easier to, to, to spread information and to get out where teams are playing. So Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it. I think it's time to to give something like that a try, and I'd like to see them continue to expand that. Playoff. I mean, obviously, when you look at the seedings, you know what I mean. They're going to call you guys Rochester Adams and not Adams. You know what I mean? That's well, yeah. just kind of like you know, that's a little bit. You know, they call Stony Creek Rochester Stony Creek. I mean, like 
if they if they did like if they took the name Rochester out, you're still the A team because of your right. alphabet. You but know? isn't it isn't it silly that 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 it's something like that determines who you play, right? It's yeah. Like how they did how they determine to describe your school affects who you play, and so again, the, I don't see random as a good thing. I never liked the random's the, not the a old, good thing, right? I never liked the old system where we just got in a room and we drew numbers out mm-hmm. of a hat. Um, so I think it's definitely an improvement, and so why not? You know, it's a, sort of like anything else you try. Like when they tried instant replay at first. There's definitely flaws, but I don't think anybody agreed. Getting sure things right, I mean, getting like, things right more times yeah. than not is better. So, more rankings, more seedings, I think is only gonna only mm-hmm. gonna make for for better playoff matchups and al- allow the best teams uh, to play the other best teams, which makes things good for the kids, the fans, and everybody else. And I think that's always a good thing. Obviously, when you look at it, you're playing the top seed. You know, you're playing right. like you know when you're seeded. You know what I mean? Like, I think if it was if we had, if we seeded everybody, you know, just imagine like you know. Some of the most intriguing matchups in the semifinals, yeah. it would have, we have great matchups and all that. You know yes. what I mean? I mean, like, so we'll see what happens. I mean, like, but now let's look at your district. Obviously, you know, we talked um, Stony Creek. We talked, um, I mean, you can go deeper if you want to talk about Stony Creek and Rochester. Both the teams are in your district. Yeah. Um, but you also got Romeo and Utica Eisenhower are also in there as well. So, so break down your initial thoughts about, the district, obviously, because I know it's the same as last year, but you know, I mean, like, if you want to go in detail, you know what I mean about that district. I I think it's possible that as even though there was it was a very good district last year, I think it's possible that all five teams will be better this year than they were last year. It's not a not a for sure thing, but uh, I think there's the potential. I don't th- I don't see anybody falling off. Let's put it that way. You know, Eisenhower is uh, just it's an avalanche of athletes when you play them. We saw them a couple times this summer, and it's, I don't even recognize half the girls, but they're just as athletic as the ones that they're replacing. And um, you know, Romeo is uh, they lose they lose their post player who right. Amanda, who is a fantastic player, but um, again, that's another program. Uh, Ron there is, is starting to get things moving in the right direction, and I think they're gonna I think they're gonna continue to get better, even though they they do again lose uh, their leading scorer and rebounder for last year. Um, and then we talked Stony Creek and we talked Rochester. Obviously, they're in yeah. your district as well. Um, you look at the job that Coach um, that Bill Thurston's done over at Rochester. Oh, yeah. You know, and you look at the job that Kellen James has done over there at Stony. I mean, like, you know, that says a lot. You know what I mean? Especially what they've done. Yeah, and we know, like we we mentioned, Rochester coming up in a matter of three, two years, going from the blue to all the way up to the red to the top division. Mm-hmm. And uh, Stony Creek's journey was was much the same. You know, I remember when when Kellen and and Chris first went over there. Um, you know, they were uh, down. I think they were in the blue. I'm not positive about that, but they were in the bottom of the yeah, white. They were in they the blue. Yeah, yeah, they were in the blue. Yeah, and they, they worked the their way up to the white. They won yep. won the white a year, and then now they're up in the red, too. So, um, you know, those those programs are – that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get to where they are. And it, in my experience watching Rochester schools from afar, it's always kind of been cycles. You know, it's Athens is up – or Adams is up now, and then Rochester's up, and now it's Stony Creek's year. And uh, with the district being – you're not having an open enrollment and, you know, everybody mm-hmm. goes to the school that mm-hmm. where they live. Um, it, it makes it a little tougher for one school to always be on top mm-hmm. because, you know, if somebody's born on the wrong side of the street. Well, now all of a sudden that other school's got the two six footer. So mm-hmm. Before, let's, I'm going a little off topic here, a little bit here, but I want to get your um, thoughts on this district at Farmington Hills Mercy. Okay. You got Farmington Hills Mercy, mm-hmm. West Bloomfield, Birmingham Marion, North Farmington, in Farmington all in one district. Yeah. What are your initial thoughts on that? That's why they need to expand to, and consider seeding more teams because, you know, it's it's geography, and I understand why they're in the same district, and you can't just, you know, you can't just change things because you know from year to year because you know these teams are going to be really good um, or you think that they might be. But, you know, those are four or five tremendous programs, and uh, I don't, you know, I, I, I feel terrible for anybody in that district because somebody's going to lose in the first round who's capable of winning a district or a regional. Or you maybe in the mean? semis. You know what I mean? But think yeah. about it, the five-team no, district. At least, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like there's, there's, good, there's three or four teams in that district that could probably win other districts in the area if you just plucked them out of there and put them in there. That's just insane when you look so. at that district. Obviously, you look at, obviously, um, you know, that's just insane. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, like, you look at those three teams that can win a district like that, and they're placed in one district. My goodness gracious. Yep, and that's so. That's again, you know, we're we're circling back to why we, or at least I like, and it sounds like you like the idea of, you know, let's let's expand it, let's seed it out more. You could even, I think it's exciting. I like the way football does it, you know, they, with the selection mm-hmm. show and show and the matchups, and 
I think just think anything you can do to, to, to make the experience more special for the kids and build more enthusiasm around the game, you're going to get my thumbs up. And obviously, you look at Adam's, I mean, like you look at Adam's sports, obviously with football, um, you know Coach Tony Petrino very well. Mm-hmm. Um, what's your initial thoughts when you look at Rochester Adams' football program, you know, and putting what Tony envisions into your program? There's, there's a, Adams has a ton of tremendous programs. Uh, football gets the most attention, you know, rather, uh, pretty much everywhere, but deservedly so at Adams it gets a lot of attention. But, you know, we recently uh, the girls' golf team won a state championship yep. this year. Heard Swimming about it, yep. state cheers, yep. cheers won like 100 years in a row. I'm going to offend the other Rochester schools, but I think that's another cycle right now. Adams is winning cheerleading the powerhouse at Adam. Yeah. So we have, in Rochester. And, and what, what football does, what they all do from what I've been able to glean is uh, they build, they build, they build programs. They don't build teams and they don't just develop players that, you know, the parents are so every time I walk into the school to do workouts, uh, there's something going on with football. There's somebody taking the kids through the weight room. There's parents cleaning uniforms and doing inventory. It's just, it's a whole family affair. And, I don't think it's a coincidence that they've had sustained success, and then when the talent comes around, they seem they tend to take advantage of it and have really big years when when they have the players to make that possible. Obviously, the offense they run is that veer triple option offense. I mean, yeah. that's one of the most difficult offenses to stop in football. Obviously, yeah. And now nobody runs it anymore, right? So it's hard to prepare. There's still for a it. couple teams that Not, do run it. That used to be right. That was almost every high school mm-hmm. team was a, some sort of wishbone or veer right. or, or you know option out of the I formation and. I think they're very difficult to prepare for because you're seeing so many teams sling it around, and uh, they they can do that, but they just kind of exhaust you uh, in the trenches there. And when you and look at misdirection, and when you look at Adams, obviously they lost a lot of talent. Um, obviously you got Brady Prescorn coming back, and that's going right. to be big for Adams. But um, the question when I look at, you know, when I look at when I look at Adams this year, I mean, there's a lot of questions when you look at, especially when you look at that division. You know, when you look at when you look at Clarkston, Lake Orion in there, you got you got West Bloomfield in there. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not gonna be an easy division for um for um for Adams. I mean, like for, for football this year, it won't be an easy division. No, I, all those teams, I think that you just you try to survive and, and get enough wins and accumulate enough points to make sure you get in the playoffs. But you're gonna be ready, you know, mm-hmm. just like we talked about with with the girls' basketball and boys' basketball. The uh, the OAA Red uh, for football is another one where it's a dog fight and. Uh, yeah, you, you're definitely preparing yourself when you're playing four or five of the probably the top 25 teams in the state in your league every year. Do you think, in your opinion, do you think there should be a trophy? You know what I mean, like a city uh, trophy for like basketball for girls basketball. You know what I mean for like the city trophy. You know, have you ever thought about you know you see trophies like you see like double O trophy between Lake Orion and Oxford or the um, Battle of Woodward between Berkeley and Royal Oak in football. Have you thought about, you know, <laughs> thinking about doing a doing a citywide trophy? You know, I don't. I that that would be for somebody who's uh, paid their dues a lot longer than me in Rochester to be able to decide uh, to do that and how to do that. But I think I think rivalries are great, and it, you know, if you have a you got know, something like Michigan and Michigan State where they have the Paul Bunyan Trophy. You know, I don't think anybody really cares about the trophy so much, but it's just sort of a symbol of how much the game means to you and. You know, we, we played Rochester this summer, uh, you know, just obviously just summer basketball, but it's cool to watch the kids compete against each other, but they know each other and they're friends. So then after the game, you know, some of them are hanging out and talking. Um, so rivalries are great. And any, you know, I, I like the, what we do right now with the, um, the, uh, I forget what cross they town? It, the crosstown showdown where we get, oh, I got That's, my next, that's yeah. my next question. That's, cross town. that's a great, I mean, that's a big deal to those kids. I, mm-hmm. I, that was something I had to learn my first year coming in here. And then the, this year we didn't, we, we were out of the cycle, but next year we'll play Stony in the crosstown. And uh, there's already people asking, you know, kids are asking, you know, what day is that? Can, can we wear the, we're getting new uniforms. Can we wear these color uniforms? And so there's a lot of excitement for that. You're getting and your uniforms. We got new uniforms. Yeah. Interesting. You know, how, how are the uh, uniforms? I know you had three uh, uniforms. Not, yet. Yeah. We still, we'll still have three. Um, we had a parent uh, chip in for, for a third color uniform. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, we're changing it up. It's been it's first time since I've been there. So girls are excited about it. Um, but yeah, it's not, not too big of a change. Still going to be the traditional Adams uniforms. Oh, huh, I mean, like it's still, I mean the good uniform. I mean, obviously I, li- I've always liked your third uniform, the dark, um, the black uniform that yeah, you had. Dark, it was beautiful. Gray. It was beautiful. I mean, yeah. like, and then, you know, you have the home white, then you have the, um, the road yellow as well. You yeah, know what for I mean? some reason, the kids don't like yellow right now. It must be out of style right now because they, they don't want the, they never wanted to wear the yellow uniforms. My whole idea was to make the grays kind of like a third uniform and wear them a couple times a year. And by the end of the year last year, they were our, our I, base road uniform. All the coaches want to wear yellow, but not I think, the kids. I think, I think great. I think great's a perfect road uniform. I really do. Yeah. You know, have you ever thought about, 
if it was me and I've always believed in the hockey concept, you know what I mean? Where they wear the dark uniform yeah, like at, the home, dark at home yeah. and then they wear the white on the road. I think that's a cool concept, you know? What about if we did something like you ever see how what UCLA and USC do when they play where they both wear the dark uniforms? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, something like that would be cool when you play the Rochester. I, you can't do it because of the MHSA rules, but right. if you could, something like that might be cool for the rivalry game where, you know, Rochester wears their blue or and we Adam wear their gold. Adams wear their gold. Yeah. Yeah. That would be absolutely would cool perfect. That would look cool on the yeah. court because, like, you think about it. I mean, like, I and this is my own opinion. I think the MHSA needs to be lax on their uniforms. <laughs> I think they do because – because you're seeing it now. You look at the NBA now these days. They're seeing it. They're wearing different type of uniforms. Right. They're wearing different type of them. Um, I mean, it would be interesting to see like you guys taking on Stony Creek. You and your gray, you and your black Stony Creek in their gold, or maybe or maybe like you and your gold golds in Rochester in your blues. I mean, yeah. like you know, I mean that would be really interesting. You know, yeah, that would be awesome. You know, <laughs> um, now let's talk about boys basketball. Obviously, you were on the um, you were on the um. New coach at Adams, obviously, last year making the state quarterfinals. Um, what is your initial thoughts on Isaiah Novak coaching the boys program? I think he's going to do fantastic. Uh, you know, I was lucky enough to meet Isaiah as they were going through the hiring process, and um, he's uh, very professional, very prepared, very organized, deeply passionate about the game. Um, one of the things that impressed me the most is uh, – how we talked about building a program earlier and that's that is what his whole thing is about more than he ever is going to talk about x's and o's it's going to be about uh, the relationships with his players and, and the pa- the families and the parents and um, just making sure that everybody gets the best experience possible um and he's got a he's bringing a great staff with him you know it's it's hard in high school i can tell you from i'm very lucky to have the staff i've been able to put together now but every year we're adding a coach or we're, or we're moving people around it's really hard to find people who have the time and the knowledge and the passion to do it. Uh, Isaiah is bringing a great staff with him. Some of his former coaches, some of his friends that he's coached with before uh, a lot of, I think they have four guys with varsity experience. I know a there, lot of them. So. I know Mike Stefani's one yeah, of them from, from Foley. Yep. I, they're, they're, so I think, I think that the Adams program as great of a job as Jared did. And uh, he really just is a tremendous coach and Avondale's incredibly lucky to have him. Um, you know, Nothing against him at all, but I, I don't think that they're, they're really going to miss a beat. Now, this might be a tougher year depending on uh, personnel, but I, I do know that the kids that they have back are extremely talented. They're extremely dedicated. Um, they're not as big as they were last year, but they're just as tough, and, they, and they're, they're only going to get tougher as they continue to come together. And, and the style that Coach Novak's going to have them play from what I've seen, uh, it's going to be fun to watch, going to be fun to play. Um, unless, of course, you're their opponent that night, in which case I think you're going to have your hands full. Talk about the red, obviously, and the boys. I know, I know, I'm a little going a little bit off topic here, a little bit, but North Farmington, mm-hmm. Clarkston, it's one of the best Burnham. public school leagues. Oak Park in the state, yeah. No, there's name a bad West Bluefield and Groves are not, in that division. Yeah. You're not going to find a bad team. You're not going to find a bad program. Um, you know, that's I think was the key to to uh, the run that that Adams boys were, were able to make this year is that. When they got to the playoffs, it was almost like, oh, this is kind of easy. You know, it's like they're under so much pressure for so many of their games all season long that it, it wasn't new to them. Whereas maybe some of the teams they were playing were playing their biggest game of the year or uh, against the toughest opponent they played. Um, I remember some Adams of them. Those, ready. I remember some of them. You mean the uh, three point miracle would beat Eisenhower <laughs> in the district final, that ruling WWE great grudge match against Lake Orion in the district oh, semifinals. Yeah. And then, you know, like, and then, um, and then of course, Winning that regional first time in school history, they've done that. And right. then running in the state quarterfinals, taking on a very good Grand Blank team. Um, when you look at when you look at the success that um, that um, the boys have had, um, what is your expectation this year with the girls program? You know what I mean? Can they feed off that success? Learn from that success. Of that's there? that's you know that's where we're trying to get to. We're trying to to model the successful programs at Adams because we have no reason not to be able to do that. We have the same, uh, you know, things available to us that they do It's just about putting people in place. So um, a lot of what the boys program did, you know, I, I, I talked Jared's ear off as much as he would tell me about the success he's had there as well as uh, coach Fran, you know, who was, yeah, the, Fran's the, the, yes, right, I know him. Was, you know, still the softball coach. He was the most successful girls coach ever at Adams. So lucky enough to have his, his ear and have his uh, advice and then uh, 
John Hall was a boys coach there. Who Love that man. With. Yeah. Love John so, Hall. So, you know, there's a, I know what the people who have been successful there have done. And it's just a matter of putting in the work and, and finding the other people because you can't do it alone. Finding the other people that you trust and share that passion. And I think, like I said, I think we're on that track now. Um, I'm really proud of the kids we have and, and the way that they play. Um, and I'm really excited to, to maybe see that finally starting to turn in, you know, in, into 15 or 20 wins a season as opposed to, uh, you know, five to 12 wins a season. When you look at recapping last year, obviously, you know, I mean, we talked about looking forward, you know what I mean? Like um, going through peaks and valleys, it's not yeah. the easiest, you know what I mean? But what's your, wh when you look at last year, you know, obviously I felt like last year, the district, the first half against Stony Creek, you know what yeah. I mean? You guys played very well, you know what I mean? In that game. And that, that process, you know what I mean? It's always looking at trust in the process. You know, I've always heard that from, from programs, you know what I mean? The themes, yeah. you know, do you guys have a theme this year for you guys coming into the season at all? Like you guys are going to use this year. We've, uh, I've actually challenged them to, to sort of come up with them. I gave them some suggestions that they thought were terrible, which is understandable, but basically we're, we're trying to have something like that to sort of a rally and cry to build around. Um, for the last couple of years, what we've, you know, what we were trying to do myself and my coaching staff was, create an environment where there was accountability for everyone, for everything that they were doing, where there was understood expectations and where playing the game was fun. You know, I, if we have a motto at this point, it's the motto for our camp that we're doing this week. It's work hard, have fun. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one leads to the other. If you work hard, you tend to enjoy the things you're doing because you tend to do them well. Uh, so what I'm, what I'm proud of with what we were able to do is, um, if you watched our games, you saw us get down by 10 or 15 points sometimes, but you never saw the kids quit. You know, we had several comebacks that we came up short, but like, for example, my first two years here now, we've had nine games where we were down by more than 15 points and cut it to single digits in the second half. We weren't able to close very many of them, but it's that progress and building that mentality where even if the other team is more talented than us, or even if the other team makes more shots on this night, we are always going to be uh, the best version of ourselves we can be. And that's that's how we try to measure success, is not by wins and losses. Because to me, if, if you go by wins and losses, half the teams are failures and half the teams are successful. Mm -hmm. And that's, I just don't look at the world that way. To me, success is, did you do everything you could to be prepared to be the best version of yourself you can be? Then you can live with it. Win or loss, you know, you're going to feel good about the result. I've had teams where, you know, we won 15, 16 games, but we should have won 18 or 19 games. And that feels worse than a team that maybe should have won three or four, but you win eight. But, you know, when you look at, obviously, when you look at, you look at, of course, you know, and then we already talked a lot about the team program strength. Um, how's the lower levels going? You know what I mean? Obviously, you've mentioned yeah. you had a lot of young, we you had a very young team last year. How's the JV program looking? How's your freshman program looking? You know what I mean? Yeah, I think that we're going to continue to, you know, to build. We were coming out of, out of COVID when, when I took the job and we, at Adams, we didn't have a freshman team, mm -hmm. which was it blew my mind to hear that, but knowing how Anything COVID happened was. when Jared was, you know what I mean? Remember yeah. the boys program? Yeah. When Jared took over, he didn't have a freshman program. Yeah. And that you just can't have, you can't build long-term. You can't build mm -hmm. a program at a school like Adams without all three levels, you know, serving their purpose. And I have great coaches now at both levels. I'm going to have both my JV and my freshman coach back. Um, JV was, like I said, 18 and three. Most of those girls are going up to varsity. Freshmen, even though we had two freshmen on varsity and three freshmen on JV, still posted a winning record last season. Um, I think that they'll be a pretty good group, and there'll be some incoming freshmen that'll probably join them uh, on the JV. And then our numbers were great. Uh, at Van Hoosen last year, we had 16. Um, and I'm Ooh, hoping— that's a lot. And, yeah, for middle school, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping most of them will stick with it this year. We're seeing a decent number of them in the summer, which is good, um, because, you know, a lot of times— the that's a tough adjustment. You go from middle school to high school, and now it's all of a sudden your coach wants you on the weekends and in the summer, too. It's a little more than they're used to. But uh, the state of the program's good. The, the middle school programs have had consistently have had winning records. And, um, you know, we have we have a couple of middle schoolers right now that I'm working with that we're very excited about, too. So I think I think the future, the near future, and especially in the long-term future are both uh, particularly bright for us. And that, that's a good thing always when you look at for the future, you know what I mean, the program, you know what I mean, building the program strength and everything. Um, yeah, I can pro I can promise you if we're not good, it's going to be because I didn't do a good job, not because we don't have enough talent now. So I'm, that's an exciting position to be in as a coach. I have a lot of confidence in you. You know what I mean? I, yeah, do. I hope so. I do. I appreciate that. Somebody's got to. I do. You know what I mean? I have a lot of confidence. I mean, like, obviously, you know, when you look at 
you know, when you look at obviously, um, you know, in sports, you got to have confidence. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, and that's how it always has to be. Um, before I let you go, J- Coach, um, my final thoughts here, obviously, um, I do want to get your thoughts on some other sports, obviously. I mean, like your initial, like, um, you know, like professional sports teams. I mean, like, what's your what's your thoughts on the Tigers? Your thoughts on the – because you're sponsoring the D, you yeah. know what I mean? So what's your thoughts on the Tigers, the Pistons, you know what I mean, and the Lions coming up? It's been a rough decade for uh, to be a Detroit sports fan, but I'm, you know – I'm not lucky enough like you to have picked some of the teams you have that uh, have winning traditions. Hockey Dallas for yeah. me, the Dallas well, Stars. Yeah, at least at least you have. Made the Western it's been Conference a while. Final this year. Yeah, you snuck in there. I did not. Yeah, come yeah. on. But no, I, the Tigers are a tough watch, but I will always love the Tigers. I love ba- I love this time of year. I love watching baseball games, having them on in the background when I'm working around the house. So um, I don't think they're very particularly good at this point, but they, you know they have a, a couple of decent players, and they got a lot of guys coming back from injury. So I'm hoping that. They can at least keep it interesting for another couple months. What about the Pistons and what about the Lions? Yeah, the Lions may get there. It's been a long time since they were the uh, team giving people the most optimism in this town, but I think there's there's reason for it. I've learned a, a lesson over my my years uh, in life. Like most people, I've I've seen one Lions playoff win in my life, and yeah, uh, I've learned not to get optimistic and, and not to buy into it because I just end up getting crushed every time I do. But uh, probably more than any other time, I, I would would not be surprised if they actually do uh, uh, win a division for the first time since I was uh, in elementary school. You know, like watching the Lions, it's like watching the Star Wars series. You know what I mean? <laughs> you're basically saying, like, you know, you heard that you you watch Star Wars Episode Four and like you look at Princess Leia and say, like, "Help me, Obi Wan Kenobi, you're my only hope." You know, <laughs> that's the Lions for you. Yeah, they're like the hope of Detroit, and then all of a sudden, like. They blow up. I mean, people look at last year. Everybody thought the Tigers would make an improvement, and look what happened to them. Yeah. Everybody would go. Wouldn't imagine how nuts this town will go if they ever do win a Super Bowl, though. You know? Maybe even a playoff game. Hey, that, well, that's a start, but I, I'm telling you, that Super Bowl, I mean, that might be the, the last day that uh, Detroit is on the map. We, they might uh, destroy the whole city with how happy everybody's going to be. Oh, yeah. I it's, agree with you but, there. Yeah, and then the Pistons are uh, – they're my favorite. They're my favorite. I'm obviously a basketball guy, so they're my favorite team to watch, unlike most people around here. But they're uh, also in the middle of a, a decade-long rebuild that's been, been pretty pretty tough. But a lot of good young players, so that'll be exciting at least for well, as long as they're competitive. Well, when you look at the Pistons, they won 17 games last year. I mean, like, yeah. they— and, they, and all they got out of it was a fifth pick. Fifth pick in the draft. <laughs> yep. And then all of a sudden, like, the— um, And then all of a sudden, like— um. I mean, they traded. They got the twenty fifth pick in the draft. At least they traded it. Yeah. With Boston, I think that was it. Yeah. Who's gonna make the uh, the playoff next, other than the Lions, Pistons, Red Wings, or Tigers? If I had to say something right now, well, you know, if I had to say the next team that would be the um, a team make the playoffs. Yeah. In Detroit, it kills me in my heart to say this, but the Detroit Red Wings. Yeah, like they, they because, were they were fairly close. Well, the reason year. why it does is because, and I'm not being mean to you, Detroit had to go to the Eastern Conference. Right. They were in the West. Remember a couple of years ago, yeah. you know, they had Colorado in there, they had Dallas in there. I mean, like, oh, yeah. you know, and forever and, Detroit was in the the West, or yeah. it was the Campbell Conference. It was called the Campbell they, Conference, yeah. like Clarence Campbell Conference. You know what right. I mean? It was great. You know what I mean? Yeah, late nights though. I'll tell you what, a lot of late nights in the oh. playoffs when you're playing a series against Anaheim and your double overtime oh. game gets over at two thirty. I in the still, morning. I still got to go through that in the playoffs. I still got to oh, go yeah. through. That. You see how my beard grows when I have to when I'm in the playoffs. You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Stars game. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know that's that's life being a Dallas Stars fan. There you go. Um, final thoughts, um, Coach Malberg. I mean, Coach Coach Malberg. How would you think about um, you know, how would you think about heading into the year? What's your expectations this year with with the ladies over at Adams? We, we want to be competitive, and in, in, same as every year. We want to be competitive in every single game. But like I said, now I feel like it's time to make that transition from hoping to win to expecting to win. You know, everybody says one of my least favorite cliches in sports is you got to want to win. Well, everybody wants to win, but not everybody's willing or capable of doing what it takes to win and to be successful. And I think we're now, we finally have the pieces and we have the mentality where uh, – Every game we look at in our schedule, there's no reason for us to think we can't win that game going into it. And if we play the, with that attitude, um, I think it's going to be a really fun and successful season. Adams Coach Joe Malberg, thank you for joining us on the podcast. Thank you, Sam. All right, I'm going to sign off here. Um, make sure you follow the blog at Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. Of course, we're not going to be on air next week with the 4th of July holiday. I'll be up north. Um, so make sure you stay on the blog at Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. Um, also... 
Take care, God bless, and I will see you all in two weeks, everybody. God bless everybody, and God bless all.